Welcome to this edition of the 700 Club. We've got uh, some big stories for you, a big one coming in from Japan. We've also got Mike Pence talking about that budget battle in Washington. And while that's going on, our chat room is open. We want to hear from you. We want to be taking your questions. Just a moment. Absolutely. In fact, we want, if you do have a question for Pat, all you have to do is just log on to CBN.com right now. Go to the Bring It Online uh, area on the computer, and we'll answer your questions. That's coming up on the Today 700 Club. And we've also got blue. Blue. We are blue today? No, blue. Oh, you've got blue. Blue's going to be here during the, the show. The dog blue. Yeah, he's going to be answering questions. But oh, good to know. First in the news, <laughs> Japan is doing its best to avoid a nuclear catastrophe. And so far, it's been dangerous work. Ephraim Graham has the story. Crews are preparing to continue the efforts to cool overheating reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. That after remaining emergency workers were briefly sent away from the nuclear complex due to a surge in the amount of radiation. In a rare public speech, Japan's emperor addressed the nation about the crisis. I'm deeply concerned about the nuclear situation because it's unpredictable. With the help of those involved, I hope things will not get worse. Meanwhile, radiation levels continue to fluctuate. Authorities are widening the evacuation zone and 140,000 people who live near the facilities are moving to the city of Koryama. They arrive by the busload, tired and frustrated. I really hope that uh, we can go back to our house so, so, as soon as possible and to live an um, ordinary life. In the same city, Fear of radiation exposure has some people lining up to be tested at a gymnasium. This woman says, I was so nervous until I got the result. It was fine and now I feel relieved. If there had not been a nuclear accident, I would not need to get tested or have had such a frightening experience. I'm angry. In Tokyo, 150 miles away, people are wearing radiation badges and buying everything in sight. Radiation fears are also hampering relief efforts to the worst affected areas. Ken Joseph is with the Japan emergency team in Sendai. Just now, the different countries have started to evacuate their people because of the threat of radiation. So people are apparently afraid to, to, come, to come in to help. There's a, a great bit of, dis, of discouragement and fear here that it's, everything's kind of happening at the same time. Despite the dangers, Operation Blessing is on the scene in Japan bringing food and water. The team is in the northern town of Shiogama, where they're distributing food and water and helping the displaced tsunami victims. Well, Operation Blessing's David Darg is with us now by telephone from the city of Shiogama. And David, I understand you've been on the scene of many catastrophes. How does this one compare with what you've seen in the past? Well, Pat, yeah, I certainly have seen my share of uh, <laughs> destruction uh, in the last several years. And this one is, I have to say, one of the worst I've seen ever. Uh, the, the, the devastation stretches as far as the eye can see along the coast and um, many, many kilometers inland, too, which is where all of the, the real loss of life has occurred. Well, David, uh, you had to drive to Shiogama uh, to avoid nuclear fallout. Uh, how far out of the way, and what's the story about that fallout? Yeah, we're trying to stay as far away from that plan as possible, as you can imagine. Um, we're nervous about it. The people are nervous about it. And we had to take a, a far route around uh, the, the plant area, um, and we've made it up to Shiogama. And we're about... 60, 70 kilometers north of the plant now. Fortunately, the winds are blowing uh, in the exact opposite direction from where we are, so we do feel very safe. Uh, David, the, the um, Japanese had uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They have vivid memories of the horror of a nuclear explosion. Do you find that fear among the people? I think the people are just nervous of... Um, all of the rumors that are circulating of the fact that there could be radiation in the rain, it could be in the wind. And, you know, they've already gone through so much. They've endured an earthquake and a tsunami and now this. And on top of everything else, it's now snowing up here. It's, it's freezing cold. And the people don't have access to heat because there's no fuel here. So one of the things that Operation Blessing is trying to do uh, tomorrow is purchase as much kerosene as we can to fuel these heaters that everyone has in their homes. Because right now they're going without well, David, I understand Operation Blessing is the only international uh, ministry in that area. I, I, is that it? 
Yes. Um, in the town of Shiogama, we're the only international aid group that's managed to reach that, that, that city. It's a city, in fact, of 60,000 people. 6,000 people have been displaced from their homes in the city. And today we were delivering food and water to a center. It's a school where families are living, 250 families we serve today. And we met with the mayor of the town. He was so happy to see uh, foreign aid coming in because it's been sl very slow to trickle in. They don't have any food in the city. They've run out of fuel. They've run out of gas. And, you know, it's a really desperate scene. So it's wonderful that Operation Blessing can be here serving them at such a time as this. David, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to point out, we are trying through Operation Blessing, excuse me, <coughs> to purchase a tanker truck load of kerosene. We will uh, buy it and distribute it free to the people, but we have to have a source. And so far, we've been unable to locate a source that would uh, sell us a truckload of kerosene so we could truck it in for those people. But I've been through Sendai um, on the way home from China, and let me tell you, it's cold up there. This is a cold area. It's the northern part of, um, I don't know if it's Honshu or whichever island it is, but it's the northern part of Japan, and it's very cold. And right now, it's snowing. The people are freezing. They don't have any heat. Those those houses they have are not set up like ours for a great deal of, uh, of uh, heating. And uh, so it's it's a tragic situation. We're doing what we can to help. But if, you, if any viewer on this program has any kind of a Japanese connection in the fuel business, please contact our director, Bill Holoran, or call the CBN switchboard at 1-800-759-0700. And if you want to help in this emergency, we, we're doing what we can <clears throat> to get those people back uh, to a normal life. So um, uh, we're asking $10, $20, $100, $1,000, dollars whatever you can do. Uh, it's Disaster Relief Fund, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Well, switching to domestic, I don't know if you call it politics, domestic statecraft, the House of Representatives has passed yet another short-term resolution to keep the government running for three short weeks. But pro-life groups are upset that the measure does not take away government funding for Planned Parenthood. And David Brody has that story from Washington. The battle over the budget and abortion is proving to be a fiery mix on Capitol Hill. A month ago, House Republicans moved to eliminate the $350 million federal dollars Planned Parenthood receives because of questionable tactics by some of the agency's workers. Representatives made their action part of a bill to fund the government through September. But there has been no agreement with Senate Democrats, so now the House has had to pass two short-term bills to keep the government running. Those moves, called continuing resolutions, have not included the part about defunding Planned Parenthood. House Speaker John Boehner told me recently that he's not going to give the Democrats a rallying cry over a hot-button social issue. We're not going to take any big chances on, on the fact that they're looking for an excuse to shut down the government. Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, they've been rooting for a government shutdown. Uh, we do not want to give them an excuse to do that. While Boehner seems determined to take away Planned Parenthood's federal help in the long term, pro-life groups want that money taken away now in the latest resolution, which would fund the government another three weeks. You're not playing around. We don't, it's really not a game. Uh, mm. and the leadership doesn't consider it a game either, but there are a lot of people who want a lot of things out of this CR, and there's nothing more fundamental and important than life. Pro-life groups say the failure to fund Planned Parenthood shows that the House is not serious about cutting spending. Meanwhile, Planned Parenthood supporters are on the Hill, lobbying hard to keep the funding in. It's a serious fight that may not get resolved for a while. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, with us now from Washington is one of the conservative champions in the House of Representatives, Congressman Mike Pence of Indiana. Congressman, what are the Democrats asking for? What are the Republicans asking for? Well, I think we want to put our fiscal house in order, Pat, and thanks for having me on this morning. I mean, look, we're facing a $14 trillion national debt, a $1.65 trillion annual deficit this year alone, and House Republicans came together in what was really a, almost an unprecedentedly open 
process. We considered amendments on a broad range of issues. We found $61 billion in savings as a down payment. And we also defunded uh, Obamacare. And for the first time in my five years of trying to do it, we managed to deny all federal funding to Planned Parenthood of America. Democrats, liberals in the Senate, for their part, uh, don't want anything to do with even cutting uh, the small amount of $61 billion compared to that massive debt. And they certainly don't want to put the sanctity of life back at the center of the federal budget like I believe a majority of Americans would choose to do. Don't the Democrats understand there's a crisis that we cannot continue to borrow from China, Japan, Europe, wherever, to fund our deficits? Pat, I, I'm not sure they do. That's that, that's why last week I said it's time to pick a fight. I, I, when you listen to Senator uh, Harry Reid go to the floor and say that a $61 billion in, in budget cuts is reckless and irresponsible and mean-spirited, um, and then he even defended federal funding for the Cowboy Poetry Institute, this just tells me that they, they just don't get it. Uh, they don't understand the fiscal crisis facing our nation and uh, and and I you know I learned a long time ago here in Washington sometimes things don't change until they have to and and uh, while we we bought another three weeks in time for negotiation here uh, I I think probably all we really did was put off the the confrontation that is going to have to come uh, between liberals in the Senate and Republicans in the House and uh, I know the American people are on our side they want us to make the hard choices and change the fundamental direction of this government from a spending standpoint, but that's not going to happen without a fight. Well, you know, you all just can't keep passing continuing resolutions or the, the budget year will be over. You, you've got to do something pretty soon, don't you? Well, I, 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 believe that, I believe that we do. As a technical matter, we could continue to do these short-term extensions over and over, but I, I think that would be a missed opportunity. You know, when you're talking about uh, the fact that Democrats didn't pass a budget last year, they didn't pass appropriations bills, so we're literally funding the government. We're paying on a, you know, pay-as-you-go basis here, keeping the, the doors open and the lights on. That's no way to, to run a railroad, no way to run a government. We have an opportunity to cut spending this year to defund Obamacare from being implemented, to defund Planned Parenthood, and uh, and I and and uh, and I, I think all of my colleagues from Speaker Boehner uh, on down on the Republican side are prepared to dig in, have that fight, and bring about real and meaningful uh, budget cuts this year. Will the Republicans in the Senate hold fast uh, on your resolution to do that? Well, I, I'm I'm convinced that uh, that with the new voices that have come into the Senate and the unity that we saw in support of the House resolution HR1. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago that uh, Senate Republicans will stand firm. You know, this is really a battle between liberals in the Senate uh, and uh, this very liberal administration uh, and, and, and I think not just House Republicans, but House Republicans and the American people. The American people are clamoring for us to change the fiscal direction of our national government. They're clamoring to respect our values again in the way that we spend our laws to take mm. a different direction on this government takeover of health care. House Republicans are going to continue to fight for that, Pat. Well, you know, one last question. We have a, a, a fiscal deficit coming up at about $1.6 I believe the number is. Uh, right. If you had your way and you were drawing up a budget, how much would you really cut to make some serious uh, changes? Well, look, uh, <laughs> it's a great point. Uh, with $1.65 trillion deficit this year, $61 billion is... Uh, you know, it, it's not a very significant amount. Compared to the debt, you'd have to pass those cuts 230 times to resolve the national debt. But it's a down payment. Uh, we really believe that, that reducing uh, off, uh, you know, the $61 billion gets us to $100 billion under what the president wanted to spend. That's what we told the American people we would do as a down payment. But we've got a debt ceiling vote coming up where we're going to demand long-term and short-term cuts beyond that. And we are going to pass a budget that puts our nation on a pathway that's uh, toward fiscal solvency and toward that horizon of a balanced budget. The American people expect no less, and House Republicans are going to fight for that. If there's a showdown at the OK Corral over, you know, either <clears throat> get your way or else shut the government down, who's going to be blamed? And are you, you willing to stand in there and, and fight it out? 
Well, look, um, <laughs> you know, the, there is a tremendous weight of conformity in Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, the book I read this morning said, be not conform. We need to dig in. We need to reject the, the cultural conformity of spending in Washington, D.C. And that's, that's going to take a confrontation. We're willing to make that stand. Nobody wants to shut down the government. But if we don't take decisive action, we're going to shut down the future for our children and grandchildren. Congressman Spence, thank you so much uh, for being here, a great leader of the conservative cause in Washington. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Christy? Well, Pat, the show continues because we've got more juicy things coming hey, up. Hey, man. Yeah, well, we are ready. We've got your, uh, well, if you have questions for Pat, he wants to answer them. So stay tuned because we're going to bring it online right after this. Still ahead. She tried to be the perfect wife. I have this vow. I'm going to take it seriously. But she was married to a monster. In a violent rage, he turned the bed upside down with me underneath the mattress, and he violated me. The day he nearly killed her, coming up later. I saw him coming down with that hammer, and I knew that's it. My last moment of life. Do you take fish oil? There's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One A Day, so I know I can trust it. The Omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from One A Day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. Tomorrow, it's the first step on the road to the White House. Presidential hopefuls descending on the Hawkeye State with one goal in mind. We need to be a country that's turning towards God, not away from God. Plus, how hip-hop landed this rapper in a mental hospital. I really was losing my soul. And then, Biggest Loser's Amy Parham on how to go from fat to fit, tomorrow on The 700 Club. All right, so we are back with the questions for Pat. Kind of sounded like a song, didn't it? All right, so here's the first one. Amy says, Pat, I have a problem house training my dog. What do I do? Get a crate, keep your dog in the crate, and only let him out at certain times. Uh -huh. And then uh, they, they're creatures of habit. If they have a habit of going to the bathroom on your rug, then that's where they think you've got to go. Mm -hmm. But get a bottle of Lysol, and every time they make an accident, spray it so they can't smell that stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, and well, here's a question. So what? we know you have blue. Bring on blue. Blue is here. Come here, blue. Come on, puppy. Come All on, right, baby. there's Blue. I got it. Okay, so my question go, is, All right, is Blue potty trained? Hey, well, well, he's Oh, he's semi, a frisky little thing. He's semi potty. <laughs> All right, so, hey, get, well, out of your, get your tea, he, he, He'll start drinking my tea here in any minute. All right, big boy, sit, please. Well, see, you know, here, Blue, that's sit. my challenge. Sit. Because I have my little oh. ginger. Now, she'll piddle outside. Got good. But the whole, you know, poop Attaboy. poop thing, that's a good she's boy. still having issues with. I am Shake hands. Sometimes she does outside, and sometimes she just says, you know what, it's cold out there, I'm not going. All right. Well, isn't this a nice dog? I ask you. He's, a, he's a getting bigger, too. I just like that those things are off his ears. Well, they're, they're starting to stand up, but he's still got a little they're work kinda to do. He's a big dog. Well, he's, he's How about big 50, is he going to get? About 50, about 90 pounds. He's about 55 he, now. Well, he's going to be about 90 <clears> pounds? <throat> oh, well, he's going to weigh almost as much as me, 90 pounds. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I ask you, is not this a nice dog? This Aren't is... you a good little dog? Aren't you a good little dog? Yes, you are. This is Desta's Midnight Blue. Okay, Midnight Blue. Can we go to the next question? I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'm going to try. Well, i got to give Blue back to somebody to take well, him off the set. Let Blue just sit. Huh? She can, he can just right, sit. sit down and stay there. There you go. All right, lie down, buddy. There, there you, go. you go. All right. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. What's the next question? I don't know. He's licking my toes. Oh, I'm kind of... Yeah, right. Ask the question. Kind of worked up. Joseph asks, what does it... Okay, what hey, does it mean say. when you dream about the devil? Well, it just means that you probably ate something bad for dinner. 
I, I don't when think. When you dream about the devil, you ate something bad for well, dinner? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a nightmare. Okay. But uh, I don't know what it doesn't have any particular meaning. It just means you're probably reading something about him. You heard something about him. Possibly. Okay, you can go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's ask Paula. I there with her. Here's another question from Paula who asked, I know we have to forgive, but I have one relative who's caused so much trouble for my family. Is it okay to stay away from them? I think so. You can forgive them, but you don't have to expose yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says speaking the truth in love, and what you need to do is go to that person and speak the truth in love and say, listen, you know, we've had a problem, and can't we resolve this? Yeah. And I also believe, Pat, that you can love a person from a distance. I do. I mean, seriously, I think that the Lord... <laughs> I'm sorry, he just licked my <laughs> foot again. Well, I'm sorry, that was, <laughs> I'd start talking about loving people from a distance. And Nicole says, how can we find our true calling in Christ? I'm distracted, Pat. Lou's distracted me. I mean, he's, well, he's a really good dog, but he keeps on. licking my feet. <laughs> All right, All right here's the last that. question. Um, something about Christ. How do we know what, the, the question rolled. How can we find our true calling in Christ and how do we know what we are called to do for him? Well, we can spend time in the Word and mm -hmm. pray and ask God for direction. God will speak. The Bible says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely and upgrades light, and he shall receive the Lord. Mm -hmm. So you come to the Lord and say, I don't know what to do, Lord. I, I lack wisdom. Would you please give me direction? Mm -hmm. God will move heaven and earth to keep you from being misled. All right? Amen. All right, here's another question. Andy says, Pat, in Genesis, it talks about the sons of God marrying the daughters of men. Ooh, what's going on there? Uh, that's a tough one, and people have been wrestling with that. I've got a book about that. People are saying, well, it, it actually, uh, there were angels uh, who were having sex with human beings and bringing forth these giants. Mm -hmm. And they think some of the giants that were there in the, you know, like uh, Goliath and people like that were actually uh, the offspring of angels mm -hmm. or, or the, the, these mighty men. And um, this book was saying they thought some of the, the deities in, in ancient Greece were actually some of these, these giant-type mm -hmm. people that were the descendants of angels. Yeah. They, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Mm -hmm. And they went into them and they brought forth children. So yeah. uh, that's the only thing I can figure. So what's next? Is that enough? I guess that's enough. I always thought it was kind of bizarre, but... Well, it is bizarre, but it's in the Bible. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Here's right. another question. Chris says, I agree that the budget needs to be tamed. However, Republicans want to cut vital programs that don't cost a lot, like election, like education, but they leave our massive defense budget alone. So why just blame Democrats when the Republicans refuse to make meaningful changes? Aren't both sides wrong? Uh, well, not really wrong. I mean, you say education doesn't cost much. The, the, the Department of Education started out at about $10 billion. It's up to about $70 billion right now. They have doubled it and doubled it and doubled it and doubled it. And we're not getting any bang for the buck. So education should be cut. But yes, the fence could be cut. We, we are wasting a huge amount of money. All these new weapon systems, we aren't fighting the Russians anymore. Mm -hmm. And we don't need these, these ultra sophisticated weapon systems. But they employ people and they're in congressional districts and people want a lot of federal goodies. Mm -hmm. So they go for it. But actually, the, the, the defense budget entitlements, everything's got to be on the table. But my number is $500 billion. That's how much it needs to get cut for any kind of a meaningful reduction, right? Hmm. OK. Next question. Darla says, with all that's going on in the Middle East and natural disasters, how should we pray? I mean, does prayer actually change things or uh, for God's will to be done? Uh, I don't think we should. Pray. Although Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath day. Uh, it didn't necessarily say when that trouble was going to come, but it says, as far as you're concerned, pray that, uh, well, he did. He, we can change it according to Jesus. Yeah. You know, pray that your flight be not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Um, so apparently there can be a change. <clears throat> I want to say something right now, and it's very serious. I do believe that we're coming into a crisis period in our world. Not only is there a, a breakup in the finances that could lead to a worldwide financial collapse, but this, this earthquake in Japan is one of the worst in recorded history, if not the worst in recorded history. Mm -hmm. And I think the ring of fire is beginning to come loose and the whole earth, you know, you read the 24th chapter of Isaiah, it says the earth will sh totter like a shack. 
the whole earth is getting shaken. And I, I believe it's going to cause for suffering and, and, and torment. And what we'll do is try to help as many as we can. But the, the, the anguish is going to be unimaginable. So just keep that in mind. You heard it here. And I, I, I'm not rejoicing. I'm, I'm saying it's sad. and We'll do everything we can to help the poor and the needy. But it's going to happen. Hmm. But you know what, Pat, I just want to address that question real quick, because I was praying last night, yeah. and I was, I was asking the Lord that very question, Lord, when things like this happen, how do we pray? And kind of like the story that happened today about Operation Blessing, how they need a, you know, a mm. kerosene donor. Okay. It's the little things. I think when we watch the news, we can pray for those specifics, like, Lord, provide yeah. you know yeah. different yeah. ministries with kerosene. Lord, provide those families with the food. Lord, provide them. Because even though the natural disasters happen, still we have the power of prayer, and God loves each and every single yeah. one of us. We want to meet our needs. So well, just don't give up during this time. That's very noble, and, and we can, but it's going to be such worldwide, a worldwide disaster that it's going to be very hard for any group like us to do much. We'll do everything we can, but it's like putting Band-Aids on cancer. It's just only so much. All right, Pat, next. Nothing's impossible for God. Nothing's impossible yeah, for he, Him. If this is His will and His time, He has a time. Jesus said a time of mm -hmm. tribulation is coming. You know, yeah. it's coming. Okay. All right. Next question. Tammy says, the Bible says, knock and the door will open. I think God opened a door for me and I missed it. Interesting. Will God open another door for me? Sure he will. Huh. But uh, we, have to, we have to listen to, for, the, for the opportunities. And when opportunities present themselves, uh, you, you can't guarantee that it's going to happen. We used to have a saying, when somebody passes out the cookies, make sure you get what you need because it may not pass the cookies out again. Mm. So God gives opportunities and gives, you know, blessing. And if you don't take it, you can't expect him necessarily to pass the cookies out again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be another one, but I mean, don't get discouraged. There's always hope in God. Let right? me piggyback off that question by asking yeah. this question. I was talking to a girlfriend yesterday, and we were both having a challenge with the whole scripture that says, faith without works is dead. Uh -huh. At what point do you stop and wait for the Lord to present that thing to you? And at what point do you say, I'm going to go out for it? Do you know what I mean? At what point do you stand and say, well, Lord, I believe it's going to happen? It's a question of being led by the Holy Spirit. I mean, the, the, the leading in the Holy Spirit is if the Holy Spirit says go. Yeah, I was reading about Paul and Silas, and uh, it says they essayed, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus wouldn't let them. Mm -hmm. So they came up here, and, and the Holy Spirit said, no, no, I don't want you to go this way. Why? Because God wanted to evangelize Europe. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to go turn back on Asia Minor and do another trip around for the Turks or whoever was living there at the time. Um, and and the, the Spirit of Jesus said, no. So if we're really sensitive, we'll be led by the Spirit. You'll hear a voice in your ear when you turn to the right or the left saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. All right? Perfect way to end that segment, Amen. Pat. Perfect way to end uh, that segment. Nice? Hey, listen, we want to remind you that if you ever do have a question, every day you can always log on to cvn.com, and Pat would love to answer them. Well, up next, we're going to meet a doctor who goes the extra mile with his patients, literally. His name is Dr. Mike Marino, and he talks about his 17-day uh, diet after this. But then later on in the 700 Club, a battered wife who survived a decade of abuse he um, would occasionally come in stoned and rape me. I contracted multiple sexually transmitted diseases where I was barren and unable to have children. See how she barely escaped with her life. I'm a small business owner. I work hard to save for my future. Lots of my customers are talking about owning gold. Makes me wonder, could gold be right for me? Owning gold is a personal decision. If you're concerned about the economy or inflation eroding the dollar, then you should learn more about gold. Gold prices keep rising. So is it still a smart time to buy? No one can predict where gold will go. But having gold as part of your portfolio is a recognized strategy for diversification. We recommend owning gold for the long term. So what kind of gold should I consider? And where do I buy it? At Goldline, we offer our clients physical gold, not gold stocks or gold funds. And it's delivered directly to you. It's easy to own gold. Call today for your free investor's kit. It provides important information about gold and shows you how to get started. For a limited time, get noted economist Philip Clapwick's CD, which reveals important insights for potential gold buyers. Isn't it time you consider gold? Give us a call today. Losing weight for a reunion, a vacation, a wedding? 
I know just how you feel. I lost 50 pounds from my wedding and I did it with Jenny Craig. I tried everything, but I realized I needed a program that was personalized to me and my body. And that's why Jenny Craig worked. Well, that and I had my personal consultant who really stood by me. Now lose 20 pounds for $20 plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-JENNY-20. So when you're finally ready to shed those pounds, call Jenny. It's the personalized way to lose weight. Dr. Mike Moreno sums up his diet plan in just two words, fast results. Well, for years, he's been helping thousands of his patients lose weight and keep it off in just 17 days. Take a look. Dr. Mike Moreno practices family medicine in San Diego. A few years ago, he started the Walk With Your Doc program, where he walks a mile with his patients twice a week. In a 17-day diet, Dr. Mike relies on proven methods to take weight off fast. From day one, it's healthy, you're eating multiple meals, and you never really get to this point where you're being unhealthy, or you typically plateau right around that 17-day time frame. So that's when we change it so that you can switch gears and continue to have the weight loss. So please welcome to the 700 Club, the author of the 17-day diet, Dr. Mike Moreno. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thanks being for here, me. man. Thank you. Appreciate okay, it. 17 days, really, let's break it down. How does this work? So 17-day cycles. Gotcha. So every 17 days, you're changing what you're doing. And this is the thing that makes this diet so unique. Mm -hmm. Most diets, you get bored. You, as yeah. you go longer and longer, you just get bored. This, you have something to look forward to. Not only yeah. do you do what you do for 17 days, but in 17 days, you're going to get new stuff, new foods, new additions to what you're doing, your diet, your exercise. So it's constantly changing. Okay, something that I thought was really, really cool, we saw it in your setup piece, that what actually started this was a lot of your patients that were coming in mm -hmm. were obese. Now, one of the things I thought you did, which was so cool, was you walk with them once a week. Right, right. So it's not just the food, but you're like, listen, we got to get Americans up walking and get their stuff uh you know, exactly. I figure if your doctor, if you're not willing to walk and your doctor's willing to exercise with you twice a week, I don't know what else will motivate someone. Exactly. So it was kind of that last straw to sort of just say, all right, it, this is what we're going to do and see if this works. And it worked out really well. Well, not for nothing. If you were my doctor, you're kind of cute. I'd walk with you <laughs> once a week, too. Who am I kidding? All right. So let's talk about the food. Um, what a better way than to um, get yourself in line in order than to make some great food, great recipes, but really good for you. So what exactly. do we have here today? This is a perfect example. It's sliced eggplant and yeah. we dip it in some some eggs and a little bit of parmesan that you're going to press in to sort of make that crust okay you bake it um flip it over after about 20 minutes and top it with any sort of marinara sauce mm -hmm. i like to use a low sugar marinara sauce because mm. again it's it's really simple to use Ooh, now really that's healthy good. it's good it's very flavorful and again you can kind of spice things up however you want you mm -hmm. know the diets are meant to be um changeable and you can do whatever yeah. you want with them well i tell you what i'm not an eggplant p uh, person at all but i would eat this it's good because it's really it tastes good. good and you've got parmesan in it you can never go wrong with parmesan yeah you can't go wrong with parmesan. right okay what do we have lettuce now, this wraps. is one of my favorite things these are lettuce wraps yeah. lettuce wraps are so common in every every restaurant you go to now okay what i love about these is this is a great thing for lunch great thing to take to work yeah it's basically scallions uh celery chicken mm -hmm. And we use grapes as the sweet, the sugar component of it. Hmm. So what I like to do is, you know, on a Sunday night, I'll take, you know, the, the scallions and the chicken, the celery and the grapes. I'll mix up that mixture, put a little bit of olive oil, maybe a little salt and pepper or any yeah. salt substitute. Mm -hmm. Mix it all together. You put a little Tupperware dish. You grab some lettuce leaves and way to go in the morning. You put it yeah. in the refrigerator and it's a great snack. And great What's meal. in front of us? I'm all about the cooking. So taco salad. Well, if you're all about the cooking, then why don't we start cooking this all right, together? All right, come so on. So this is the taco salad, all which right. is really simple. This uh, now again, you can use ground beef. This is turkey, which works really well with yeah. the season. Um, you know, you brown this. I'll add a little bit of water to this. Okay. Um, and a little bit of seasoning. And, uh, you know, you want to boil this and just sort of boil off the excess water. Okay. You can go ahead and toss and that in there. And here's the key, too, when you're – oh, <laughs> I guess we should turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did we forget about that part? So I'm not a chef. I'm a doctor, but in general. <laughs> there we go. All right. There you go. All right, cool. So here's the other thing, too. When it comes to ground beef, a lot of people um, get the maybe – you know, 70, 30, when technically you should get, what, 95% fat for Yeah, the for leaner the better. The leaner you know? the better. And, you know, a lot of this thing, I think an important thing to do, and whether it's with turkey or ground beef or mm -hmm. whatever you're using, is once you've browned it, drain off that excess fat, get rid of it, um, and so that when you add a little bit of water and the seasoning, it'll just kind of boil it all off. But okay. This is a great thing to do. Now, what is the seasoning that I just put in? What was that? You know, there's a number of just generic seasons you can find, low in sodium. Um, a lot of these things are not going to cause a lot of effect to your blood pressure. A lot of people 
worry about sodium as they should. Okay. Um, you know, Mrs. Dash, all kinds of different salt substitutes out there. I love using sea salt. Sea salt's great. That's thing really, to use. really good. Really, really good. And they've got to be careful um, so that they don't have MSG and whatever the seasoning exactly. is. Exactly. So there's a number of these um, seasonings available. Um, then you can add a little onions. And again, it, okay. it's just, there's no rhyme or reason. Right. It's kind of just to, uh, you know, have fun with it and play Here, with it. Here, why don't you um, stir and I'll pour in. Tell me what's perfect. next. So, uh, the, I just wanted to see you cook. Uh, yeah, I know. Nothing like I love cooking, actually. I don't, I didn't have to be good at it, but I love doing it. It's all good. All right, what's next? So, uh, <laughs> basically what we do, since this is like cooking up pretty well. Yeah. Um, we take some, uh, I like to use, now you can use this as a bed of lettuce. So I take a plate and I'll usually just sort of lay this on top. A lot of times you can just use the lettuce leaves that we did here. Okay. And make that, that sort of shell that people classically think of with a taco okay. salad. So your shell is actually going to be your lettuce. All right. Well, um, let's get, let me get a plate, and we'll just kind of do that a little bit. So I'll just take some yeah, lettuce. Yeah, bed of lettuce, exactly. There we go. Again, there's no right or wrong reason. Odds are you'll probably come up with something that's kind of fun. All right, so we put that on there. And again, this is great for dinner. Very simple. I mean, you can make this in literally 10 minutes. Really ah. simple. Okay, now and what? And then you just kind of top with whatever you like, you know, cheese and tomatoes. A little bit of salsa is always good, but you play with it. This is something that's, you know, it's a salad, but it has a lot of flavor. Very simple to make. Nutritiously, I mean, it's it's... It's a great, you know, great meal to, to eat, and it, it'll it looks fill you. Delicious. It will fill you. I guarantee it. And I, I, I'm sure you'll be proud of me for saying this, but I actually do this myself at home. <laughs> I mean, these are small, just a few examples of of the the number of recipes that are available in the book. So it's meant to be fun. Well, can I just tell you, you gave me the perfect lead into your book. Perfect. Bum, bum, bum. For more <laughs> great recipes, to check out Dr. Moreno's book. It is called, what's the name of your book? The 17-Day Diet. Very good. <laughs> and it is available in stores nationwide. Now I'm supposed to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. We're going to be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Don't forget the book. It's great. I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling, I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be OK. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient. It is only about the patient. And what is it that they need and what do they want? Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. The American Center for Law and Justice is trying to keep an Islamic mosque from being built near Ground Zero in New York. ACLJ attorneys appeared before the New York State Supreme Court Tuesday, arguing the site is hallowed ground and not the place to build a mosque. The ACLJ says it would be deeply offensive to many Americans, especially family and friends of 9-11 victims. Israeli authorities say they intercepted a ship carrying a large number of weapons headed to the Gaza Strip. Iran in Syria reportedly tried to send those weapons to Palestinian militants. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordered the takeover of the vessel based on intelligence reports. They seized three containers of weapons. Israel has maintained a naval blockade of Gaza since Hamas seized power nearly four years ago. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Christie will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Attention investors, now is the time to protect your retirement accounts and investments. Excessive government spending is devaluing the U.S. dollar and high rates of inflation are coming. 
Gold has tripled since 2001, and some experts predict the prices will climb another 100%. Buy gold now, direct and wholesale, with United Gold Group. The demand for gold around the world is higher than ever. Foreign countries like China and India are buying up gold at record rates. Why? What do they know that you don't? Call now and get your Gold Investor's Kit absolutely free. Call in the next five minutes and receive the secret to owning gold in your retirement account, also absolutely free. Just call 1-800-758-5070. That's 1-800-758-5070. This could be the most important call you make this year. United Gold Group, investing in America's future. Losing weight for a reunion, a vacation, a wedding? I know just how you feel. I lost 50 pounds from my wedding and I did it with Jenny Craig. I tried everything, but I realized I needed a program that was personalized to me and my body. And that's why Jenny Craig worked. Well, that and I had my personal consultant who really stood by me. Now lose 20 pounds for $20 plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-JENNY-20. So when you're finally ready to shed those pounds, call Jenny. It's the personalized way to lose weight. Tomorrow. It's the first step on the road to the White House. Presidential hopefuls descending on the Hawkeye State with one goal in mind. We need to be a country that's turning towards God, not away from God. Plus, how hip hop landed this rapper in a mental hospital. I really was losing my soul. And then, Biggest Losers Amy Parham on how to go from fat to fit tomorrow on The 700 Club. Only the Lord knows how many women suffer abuse at the hands of their spouses. Some are humiliated, some are deprived, some are physically beaten. It's horrible to even contemplate. And usually the women put off a brave face and try to act like it didn't happen, or many of them start to think it's their fault, there's something wrong with them. Well, Jeanette Town suffered 10 years of humiliation and physical abuse from her husband. Then one morning, she summoned the courage to stand up to him, just in time, I might add, to save her life. Jeanette was a 19-year-old waitress. Jim was a successful businessman. He gave me this great tip, you know, who threw $100 bills out? That was my rent for the month. So we started a um, friendship that developed into a romance, and I was very ready to just walk down the aisle. Jeanette wanted to earn more money than she made as a waitress so she could go to nursing school. One of her bosses, Iris, had a suggestion. There's lots of other ways you guys can make more money besides just waitressing at this restaurant. Iris told her about escorting clients for $500 a night. I'm sure they expect more than just a date. And she said, no, you can do whatever you want. It's just a date. So I could use 500 bucks. Instead of making 100 in tips, I could go on a date and make 500. Jim was furious when he heard about Jeanette's plan. He knew that Iris was a prostitute. He said, these guys are big time. You got yourself involved in a very bad place. They're not gonna let you out. They, they kill people. Jeanette and Jim fled to a motel to spend the night. So I went in and noticed there were two beds. So I jumped on one and I said, I'll take this side. And Jim looked at me and he came over and he like grabbed me by the arms and he said, what? And I said, I'm a virgin, I've never done this before. And he said, well, we're gonna go to the Justice of the Peace the first time the court opens up. And he said, if this is the kind of life you want, I'll give you that piece of paper. Jim and Jeanette went to the Justice of the Peace and married. They spent their first night as husband and wife in a nice hotel. After the first time we were together, he basically says, well, I have to go out I have to work tonight, I'll see you later. And I was left there in a room just feeling like I had thrown my whole life away. That was the first time I was with someone and it wasn't right and I was gonna make it work. Okay, I have this vow. I'm gonna take it seriously. I'm gonna be the best wife that anybody could ever be. They moved into Jim's house and he brought his two-year-old daughter to live with him. And I realized very quickly that I was now the babysitter. I was left in the house to clean and take care of his daughter while Jim went out and did business. And I want to question him, he'd say, I'm the breadwinner. How much are you contributing to this family? 
And then I learned very quickly after that, that if I ever questioned him, I would get wrath. Jim's verbal abuse got worse, along with his drinking and drug use. Then Jeanette suspected he was cheating on her. She summoned the courage to ask him. His reaction was swift and violent. He came after me and I just looked at this changed face and angry veins bulging. And he lifted me up and he physically threw me down the hallway into a lump. And I'm on the floor, I'm hit up against the wall, and he comes within inches of my face and he starts screaming at me. He um, would occasionally come in stoned and rape me. And throughout the period of our relationship, I contracted multiple sexually transmitted diseases where I was barren and unable to have children. Jeanette started working as a teacher in a computer lab. That led to a job with a Fortune 500 company. I was a golden girl at work, and at home I was nothing. And I couldn't tell anybody about it. I was so embarrassed. So this one night, Jim came home, and he had been bringing a girlfriend home with him. He said, so I guess that's it with us, huh? And I knew what he wanted me to say, but I said, I guess so. In a violent rage, he turned the bed upside down with me underneath the mattress, and he violated me. The next morning, Jeanette accidentally awakened him while leaving for work. He came out of bed spewing the vile venom and profanity, and that's when I saw a hammer on the counter, and I knew, that's it. My last moment of life, he's gonna crush this into my skull. And he grabs the hammer. I crouch down with my hands up, crying out for God. I need you, God. I need a miracle now. I need you to save my life. I need to live. And as I saw him coming down with that hammer, and I'm just crying out to God, something grew in the middle of my stomach and burst out of my lips, something that wasn't me. And I challenged him, I said, go ahead, you're never gonna have a chance to hurt me ever again. And Jim stood there with a hammer and like dumbfounded, he dropped it and, and, and like was mumbling. And I fled. Jeanette divorced Jim in 1988 and went back to school to finish her nursing degree. The following year, Jeanette met Sam, who invited her to church. I always knew who God was. I knew who Jesus was and I wanted to follow him. But that moment, I felt like I embraced becoming a Christian. I had no doubt that I was saved, that I was gonna have eternal life and that my life was forever changed. Jeanette and Sam married in 1990. In 1992, with the help of fertility drugs, she gave birth to twins. They also adopted two more children in 1998. Now we have four teenagers, so life's a little crazy, but it's, I'm thankful it's never been the same. I have a lot to be grateful for. God has blessed me immensely. Today, Jeanette is not only a busy mother, she is president and CEO of Synectic, a multi-million dollar communications corporation. It's been over 20 years since her escape from an abusive marriage. Jeanette has learned to forgive. You can carry around that rock of unforgiveness for years like I did, and it can just be a huge angry pit but what I learned in forgiving and accepting and accepting that healing power that I no longer was a scar from my past but I used that tough scar to be what I am today it's made me what I am today that what Satan means for evil God turns that around and uses that for good let me ask you right now, are you in some kind of an abusive relationship? And by the way, it doesn't have to be women. Some men are in an abusive relationship and they're being cursed at and sworn to and physically abused by women. It isn't just women who are having that problem, and usually it is because they're weaker physically. Do you want to be free? Where do you start? You start by coming to the one who loves you. You see, the God we serve made the heavens, and he made the earth. He made everybody who lives in it. He controls the sea, the waves, the sky. 
And he also controls the devil. The devil has a certain amount of freedom, but he can be restrained by the power of God. And if you need help right now, Jesus wants to draw you to himself and say, I love you, and I'll cleanse you, and I'll give you the wisdom to set you free. Because that's what he came to do, to set the captives free, to break the chains and to set you free. Do you want to be free? And some of you are free. Hey, you're enslaved to drugs. You're enslaved to, to drink. You're enslaved to sex. You're enslaved to pornography. Whatever. Jesus Christ wants you to be free. And what I want you to do is to pray with me. Let's give that to the Lord, and let's you walk free. And you may have to walk out of an abusive marriage. You may have to do a lot of things. The Lord will take care of you if you turn yourself over to Him. But I want you to pray this prayer with me right now and pray these words. Jesus, that's right, pray with me. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, and you died to set me free. Lord, I thank you that you broke the chains of satanic bondage, and you've set me free. So I turn to you, and I cry out to you, and I say, Oh, Lord God, fill me with yourself and set me free. And Lord Jesus, I receive you. Come into my heart. Fill me with yourself. And from this moment on, I'm yours. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Father, for those who prayed just then, let the anointing power of the Holy Spirit rest upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed with me, I've got some books about marriage, divorce, things that you've been through, drug addiction. But I also have this, A New Day, which kind of goes through everything that has been going on in your life. It's a CD and plus a little booklet. And I'll give it to you free if you want it, if you just call. No, no obligation whatsoever. But I want you to call in right now and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. And I am free. 1-800-759-0700. Or you can log on to CBN.com. Christy? Thanks, Pat. Well, up next, a boy who failed the first grade three times, but then he skipped the second grade. See what made the difference when we come back. I always wore a mask. I would never let anyone see what I really felt inside. My whole life, all I wanted to hear was that I love you and I want you. I just realized all of the horrible things that I've done in the past to feel loved and accepted. They were fleeting. It didn't matter. The relationship that I wanted my whole life was right there for me, and it was Jesus. Life can be tough. There are challenges for all of us. Jesus told us to pray for one another, and that's exactly what we want to do. On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to bring Christians together to pray for each other. Meet others just like you and talk or share with them in real time. Watch God work miracles in people's lives. Be part of 700 Club Interactive, weekdays at 9.30 on ABC Family. I thrive on adrenaline. I drink about a half a pot of coffee every day. In a 24-hour news cycle, there are hundreds of stories going on around the world. You don't know if you're going to be covering a bombing in Israel, a swine flu pandemic, an inauguration of a new president. No matter what the story, we tell it with a Christian perspective. It does get crazy, especially when we have a bureau in Washington, D.C. They're doing their part to cover the story. Then you have a reporter that's doing their part, and our job is just to pull it all together for that final product. The news doesn't stop, and neither do I. I'm Tyler. I'm a news producer. I work at CBN. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, when a boy named Boris skipped the second grade, he was thrilled, and so were his parents. After all, Boris had spent three years repeating the first grade. Here's why. 
Ten-year-old Boris Quintanilla had to repeat the first grade three times, which made him the oldest in his class. I feel bad when my classmates mock me. I didn't know why he was failing and not learning how to read. He worked hard doing his homework, but he couldn't learn anything in the classroom. Then Boris started getting debilitating headaches. Boris's father is a farmer trying to raise seven children. Sometimes there isn't enough money even for food. So the family was grateful when an Operation Blessing medical team came to their town with a free medical clinic. A simple eye test started to reveal the problem, but Operation Blessing wanted to make sure nothing more serious was going on. So the medical team took the boy to see an ophthalmologist. There, his parents learned that Boris's only problem was a bad case of nearsightedness and astigmatism. A new pair of glasses provided him with 20-20 vision. And the headaches are completely gone. Now I feel better at school because I can see the letters much better and I understand more. Just two months later, Boris's teachers reported to his mom that her son's grades had improved so much that he could move up to the third grade. It's a big change now. He sees well. His grades have gone up. Thanks, Operation Blessing, for giving me the glasses. I will never forget you. You know, I'm watching that story and I can't stop smiling because I was thinking my son went through the exact same thing. But you know how privileged we are here in the United States that when our children are in front of a chalkboard and they can't read it, we can take them to the eye doctor and get glasses and the problem solved. But there's so many people around the world or country, they don't have that privilege. But you know what? They can be blessed, yet still because of you. You see, when you become a 700 Club partner, you provide things like glasses to that lovely little boy to help him to succeed. And in turn, you bless the entire family. So I just wanna say thank you so much if you're a 700 Club partner. And I wanna also ask this, maybe you're not one. Well, this is the opportunity to become one. It's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and it could change a little boy's life. And hey, listen, we wanna make it easy for you. We wanna encourage you to do something called Pledge Express. It's automatic bank transfer system where literally the bank does all the work. So all you have to do is just commit and it just flies right through. And when you do, we wanna give you this called Power for Life. It's a teaching series. I believe it comes every month from Pat and Gordon. And this will really, really just build up your faith and just help you with your walk in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Speaking of helping with the walk in the Lord, can yeah. I say something cool? Yeah, you can. We have had people call in and write into the 700 Club um, just every single day just to say how encouraging the ministry has been to them. That's in fact, cool. Noelle has said that, uh, she said, you can't imagine the impact the 700 Club has had on my life. She said she started watching two years ago. She was sick with lung disease. Her son was facing prison. Um, and she hadn't been baptized since she was 18 years old. And she said she started watching the 700 Club, started to get built up in the Holy Spirit. And she said, I finally got it. She started to pray and believe and really gave her life to the Lord. And she says that literally just the faith and hope that the ministry has given her has really changed her life yeah. around, Pat. Yeah. So that isn't that what it's all about? It sure is. Yeah. Well, folks, thank you so much for being with us. And remind me, uh, even though this program is off the air, uh, you, we stay here with our counselors. So they'll be here if you need a prayer. It's a telephone number. It's toll free, 1-800-759-0700. Well, we leave you these words from the 54th chapter of Isaiah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their reward is from me, saith God. It's all the time we've got. See you tomorrow. Don't miss it. Bye-bye.